For the next 31 days on the FCPA Compliance Report, we're going to be bringing you a daily tip, strategy, or idea that you can use to improve your program. Here's your host, Tom Fox, the Compliance Evangelist. This month's sponsor of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is Affiliated Monitors. Founded in 2004, Affiliated Monitors provides professional, independent, integrity monitoring and ethics and compliance assessments nationally and internationally and across almost all industries. With its knowledge of effective ethics and compliance programs and cultures, Affiliated Monitors is respected for its work as the corporate monitor on matters ranging from multinational corporations to small and mid-sized companies and even individuals. Having served in over 750 monitorships, no one has more experience as an independent monitor than the team at Affiliated Monitors. For more information on how an independent monitor can help improve your company's ethics and compliance programs, visit this month's sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, at www.affiliatedmonitors.com. Compliance to see around corners. The more you can operationalize compliance, the more <clears throat> it works to uh, for your culture. It works at all levels of an organization, literally from the boardroom to the shop floor. The Department of Justice and Securities and Exchange Commission recognized with this when they noted in their 2020 FCPA resource guide, a compliance program should apply from the boardroom to the supply room. No one should be beyond its reach. Your culture can provide more than than simply an ethical foundation. It is also part of the business foundation of every entity. In a New York Times interview with Corey Thomas, president and CEO of Rapid7, he said that companies with smart, dedicated, and motivated employees can still fail if they do not get their culture right. The culture can accentuate the collective or it can be a distraction. If it's a distraction, it can make everyone worse than they would be, either individually or in small groups. Further, smart and talented people have the capability to do something really phenomenal or engage in really destructive behavior. So culture ends up being a huge matter uh, to every organization. Yet, it is even more sophisticated as part of culture includes cohesiveness. Do the culture and the people and the company's business line up and make sense? Have you ever looked at that from the compliance perspective? Sometimes you find inconsistencies. You might have a group of hard-charging, goal-oriented people, but what if their job is to figure out a market solution? Maybe they can't do it because they're better at executing than being creative. So the team needs to be cohesive, but they can't be monolithic because teams with the same kinds of people miss more often than they hit. More diverse teams can see around corners because they have different perspectives. Such an approach to communication allows a CCO to see around corners and can be one of the greatest strengths of a corporate compliance program. The reason is listening. Listening is a key leadership component and there are certainly many ways to listen. You can sit in your office and wait for a call or a report to come in on the hotline. Or you can go in the field and find out what challenges employee facing. In today's world of COVID-19, you can initiate a Zoom call. From this, you can work with them, the employees you speak with, to craft a solution that works for the company and holds to the company's highest ethical standards and values. Using social media tools, a CCO can move towards Thomas's next agreement, ingredient rather, of a successful corporate culture, which is trust. Thomas is obsessed with culture that we create specifically around trust, and this is an adjustment for some people when they get to his organization of Rapid7. If you join our team, there's trust by default here. This means you trust the competence of your teammates, You trust in their intentions and you trust what they say. At some companies, trust is earned over time, but at Rapid7, it means that everyone in the organization has already earned their trust and the actual energy that goes into the trust earning process is a distraction from the company's overall mission. So you can see that uh, 
one of the key themes literally throughout this podcast series has been trust and why it's so important. So what are today's three key takeaways? It doesn't matter how great your talent is at your organization. It can still fail if you don't get your culture right. You can look at any of the most recent major corporate failures, and I'm not going to name them, but we all know who they are. It's all around culture, uh, either tone at the top, mood in the middle, or the muddle at the bottom uh, was off from the company's overall stated mission. And when you have that sort of disalignment, uh, that's when you get into some really big problems. Number two, using this approach to communication allows a CCO to see around corners. And what's this approach? Well, it's having a diverse team. Who is a CCO do you listen to? Do you only listen to those in the senior management level? Do you only listen to those uh, in the compliance function? How often do you get out and poll your employees? In the era of COVID-19 and the coronavirus health crisis, I think this is even more important that you need to find ways to not simply engage employees, not only know how they're feeling and what they're thinking, but really what are they feeling and thinking about the company? How do they feel the company's treating them in this uh, era of unprecedented times, but one that has moved us from disaster recovery to business continuity to business as usual? And number three, when was the last time you thought about trust as a business strategy? Uh, I was really struck that um, Rapid7, you don't have to earn trust. It's assumed. Now, of course, you can violate that trust, but once uh, you've established trust, you don't have to put the time and energy into earning it going forward. Hello, everyone. This is Tom Fox. I'd like to thank you again for joining me for this episode of 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program around business ventures. And I hope you will join me for our next episode tomorrow. Also, I'd like to shout out to our sponsor, Affiliated Monitors, for sponsoring this month's podcast series. This podcast series on 31 Days to a More Effective Compliance Program is a production of the Compliance Podcast Network.